Well hello folks, today we're doing a quick fix on the knee crank of my milling machine. And what it's the way it's set up at the moment is it's um, it's got a two sets set of two washers and a flathead screw and I've left it loose so that I can undo it by hand because sometimes in my small workshop I've got to take this off just to make a bit of clearance to get past the machine. Um, what I'd like to do is make a knob that incorporates this washer, which is act, act as a spacer, and it's not actually thick enough. This, this is left proud of that, so there's actually a bit of slop in there when this is done up as tight as it can be. Um, I want to incorporate that washer that I've just dropped. I want to incorporate the brass washer as well. And I want to incorporate a screw of some sort, and I probably want to make this into a thumb wheel so I can quickly whip this off, store it the other way around, or store it somewhere else. There's a second motivation for making this, and that's that I want to mill a, an adapter that's the same as this, that goes on my cordless drill one day. But while this is all sort of slow to remove and three parts that are easily dropped, I think what I'll do is make this quick release knob first, and then think about the adapter another time. Now you might be wondering what this screw on the side of here is for, and so am I. I took this apart and had a look inside. There's no set screw, um, no sort of flat or grub screw or anything like that. It's just perhaps it's holding that sleeve in there. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to take that out and see if anything bad happens. And we'll make up one of these, a knob to replace this assembly. Okay, well after measuring up this screw, you can see that it's... Uh, um, 20 TPI and a hair under quarter inch, so I think it's a quarter 20 UNC. I do keep Imperial bolts and nuts in stock. Most of them are salvaged, as you can see. And probably the best one I could find here that had any kind of grade marking on it was this one here. Um, if I've got enough length there, what I'll do is um, cut the head off and lock tight this into the knob that I make. Now I want this thing to be, I want the knob outer diameter to be no bigger than the uh, corner of this forged bit or cast bit, whatever this is. So let's make it, let's make it 34 OD. That's a terrible circle, but the lathe will make a nice circle for me. Um, I'll probably do flutes around the edge. I don't know how many. I'll just work that out later. Um, I think the outside of this knob is just going to be a flat, flat face. I probably want a recessed area just to make it easier on the fingers. Um, and I also, of course, want some clearance for the shaft that comes through so that this is actually bearing down so this knob actually bears on this face and actually closes up these tapers that's something the current arrangement doesn't do properly if I put a thicker washer in it would do but it's still a pain to use so these are tapered so they're meant to be pulled in tight so that they can eliminate all the play which makes making small measurement small adjustments really easy then so how big does that have to be? That's measuring 17.5. So if I make this 18, that gives a bit of clearance. Um, there's no point making this bit any bigger than this bearing area, bearing diameter. So that's that could be 25. Um, I said that was going to be 34. Uh, this is going to have flutes. It's going to have a quarter 20 blind tapped hole up the inside as well. Um, whoops. Quarter inch, 20 TPI. Um, we probably want the size of the knob to be 
doesn't want to be any thicker than 25 and we want most of that to be grip area let's say 17 Um, that should be enough to get started with and my mate Jeff gave me a piece of steel yesterday that was kicking around and looks like it's big enough so I'm going to take too much off of that to make it fit this and it's long enough that I can get, grab hold of that in the chuck and still make a, a useful size piece from the end 25 that's going to be so yeah okay over to the lathe well, this is that 20 millimeter Michitoyo indicator that I got, and I've got the new bezel on it, and all the shafts and everything around here is is nice and clean, and uh, it's working great. I'm not actually a fan of the spring adjust. I can't get a very consistent adjustment on here, so what I'm going to do is replace that rod with just a straight rod, and use the dial for my adjustment. I've clocked in this piece of um, piece of bar stock as close as I need to, it's within three or four hundredths. It's not actually even round because it's been sheared off at the end I think and so there's a bit of, bit deformed but I've got to take uh, four mil off the diameter of this anyway so it makes no difference as long as I don't take it out of the chuck. Now I'm going to show you a tip that I mostly got from my food boy and it's sort of extended for my own use and I found that my results on the lathe are much better since I've been doing this. Much easier to find out how much to take off with each pass since I've been doing this trick. Most people set the um, calipers to zero and that's it, they work from there and that's, that's, how they, that's how they work. And that way they're no better than a vernier caliper really. But these can be used a bit like a DRO. So um, I'm copying my food boy here. Just let me uh, let me reiterate that. So he he shows this in one of his older videos, and I saw it and I thought it was genius. Dead simple, but in, unless you know to do it, you, you you're missing out. So I'm aiming. I've roughed this down. I know it's slightly oversized. I'm aiming for 34 millimeters exactly. I'm trying to work in metric and I've got an imperial lathe here, so that says 36.08 and so it's pretty easy in this case to do the mental arithmetic and say well there's 2.08 to come off the diameter and so I need to take 1.04 off the um, radius so I need to feed my tool in 1.04 except I'm on a um, imperial lathe so you know it's not too difficult to say well let's take 40 thou which is about a millimeter and then see what's left that kind of thing well you end up with especially with carbide tools you end up not being able to take that minimum cut at the end so you have to feed it in a little bit more and then you end up over cutting and you don't hit your number at all um, so there's two or three techniques here that I'm, and I'm borrowing from Carl who's one of the viewers, Carl White, he, he um, set up my precision stones for me. Um, my food boy showed this technique of using the zero on, on the calipers before, and also I think Stefan Gotswinder did something similar to this recently, but he's using a DRO, so it's a, a little bit different. So anyway, rather than waffle on, what I will do is set the calipers to my desired size. I want to end end up with exactly 34. I'm, I'm ignoring tolerances and things because this is just a home project. I'm going to set this to 34. I'm going to try and hit that as close as I can. And what I'm going to do is zero it there. This is what makes the difference between digital calipers and a vernier or a dial caliper. I can zero this. Measure here. 
and I've got 2.08 to come off the diameter. So I don't have to do any mental arithmetic. Well, I have to halve that, um, but that's, that's pretty minor. Now the real beauty, of that, and that's my boy's trick, the real beauty here is I'm on an imperial lathe. So I just do that. I realize I've got to take 41 thou aside to hit my, 40, to hit my 34 millimeter diameter. Now Carl's trick, and I, I understand this is the same way Stefan and probably millions of other people do it, but it was a revelation to me, is to take that 41 thou and divide it by two or three and take some balanced cuts and take a measurement in between each of those two to three cuts. And, and because you're taking balanced cuts, the tool is being forced away from the work the same amount every time. The workpiece is deflecting the same amount every time. Um, and you end up being able to take one decent sized cut at the end, which gets over the edge radius of your carbide tool. And there's no sneaking up. You, you're actually taking balanced cuts and you take the last piece as a decent cut, which gives you a better finish and all the rest. So what have I got to take here? Uh, 41 thou a side is not divisible by three cleanly. So we'll take two 14s and a 13. And I'll sort of do this the slow laborious way and I'll take a measurement e between each cut and, and show you where we're at. So the first cut I'm going to take is 14 thou. I'm going to dial that in on the cross slide and we'll go from there. So that says 55 thou. So, I mean, I'm, I'm doing mental arithmetic this time just to demonstrate it, but that's basically taken 27 thou. Now we've just taken, we've asked it to take off 28 and it's taken 27, but that's okay. Now half of this is 27 and a half. So we're still tracking well with our 14, 14, 13. Let's take the 14, next 14, see how we go. I'm not getting a particularly good finish on this because it's just mystery steel and I'm hand feeding this and it's an old it's an old insert and the insert is a cheap one to start with from Banggood so and that reads 26 and a half thou so we are trying to take we, we were setting it up to try and take 13 in the, in the last cut and we now have to take 13 and a quarter. Now my divisions on my cross slide dial are about a millimeter and a half apart. So I can eyeball half or a third of a thou fairly easily. I'm gonna give it a go to hit it on the dot. Um, so 13 and a quarter, I'm gonna try and dial that in. But on every lathe I've seen, you can at least dial it into a thou. Um, let's give it a go. Okay, the finish actually looks worse than it feels. Um, but anyway, just doing what we can with some scrap here. I felt a bit loose. So that's pretty good. That reads 0 0.0000. This this can measure down to half thou. This this indicator, this caliper. Now I, I don't have a um, um, real good digital um, mic that goes up to 38. I've got one that goes to th um, 25. Now anyway, the, the the test real test is we've been working in Imperial. We're trying to get. Um, 
metric numbers. So I'm going to zero this. Looks like I've just added some dirt there. Zero this, put our metric. Just see what we came up with. Oops. Thirty-four oh two. Let's have another go. Still feels a bit loose. Better. Thirty-three nine nine. That feels like a more accurate measurement. Um, you know, that's ten microns <laughs> on a on a fifty-year-old lathe uh, that, that's actually quite worn. But that's not bad. And it doesn't take long and it's not that complicated. Anyway, I will rough out the shoulder on here and we'll see what we get next. So this is a trick, I don't know where I got this from, but um, I'm stealing it unashamedly. I'm putting the um, uh, ruler straight across the end of the faced off part, and I'm just manipulating the, the tool until it just clicks, and then I'm taking it just away. And then all I have to do is move my carriage the distance I want for, for the thickness of part. And I don't have to compensate for the um, thickness of my part off tool. Nice and simple. And to do that, I've got a um, longer, longer travel indicator on a mag base, and I'm just going to try and keep this spindle parallel to the lathe axis, and then drive this along by my desired part size. So that's going to be 25 mil. So one, five. And fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Lock off the carriage. Remove the indicator. It's good to do a quick sanity check, and that looks. Like 25. Got to start by parting a bit of this off and then put the chamfer tool in and try and put a chamfer on the top of it as well. Actually, it'd be pretty dumb not to uh, drill and tap this quarter 20 while it's on the lathe. Quarter 20.201, which is a fraction under. 1364, that'll be good. I'm putting the lathe in back gear, and I've done this tap up, which is just a hand tap, and it's not even in very good condition. So it's uh, you know not absolutely not ideal, but I've done it up by hand in the in the Jacobs chuck, so this is gonna slip before anything bad happens. And we'll just run this in and I'll take the um, clamp off the tailstock so it can pull itself in. And I'll use a little bit of um, engine oil and kerosene lubricant. And I've got my hand on the off switch. I need a little bit more tension on that, not much. I'll have to do it with a hand tap. But at least it started straight. Also before I part it off, I'm just going to hit this with a file quickly, just see if I can't get this uh, finish just slightly better. I mean it is only mild steel, but so it was never going to turn beautifully, but 
I'm just going to see if I can improve on that a little bit. Well, I reckon you might have noticed before me, but I forgot to do this this um, this rebate, the clearance for the end of the shaft. So <laughs> I had to take it back to the lathe and put it put it in and um, grip it with some shim stock. But that's okay. I clocked it in on the um, on the radius and on the end on the face, and uh, just turned this with a boring bar, a little boring bar. Um, it's also had a trip to the buff, the uh, the polishing wheel. It's not finished, but it's. Um, it's not just about bling. Um, if it's if it's got a polished surface, it's less likely to rust, I think, or I've found. Um, so our next step is to glue this this stud in. I cut this off. It, this turns out that it's stainless, but that's not going to hurt. Um, all right, I'll glue that in, and we'll um, take it over to the mill and do the flutes next. Okay, just a quick word about setup. I've got a 14 mil four flute high speed steel end mill in here, and I'm gonna plunge it into the side of here. I'm gonna move the X axis across, and I've got just a little bit of clearance between the cutter and the jaw face. Um, I've got the main table set to zero degrees, and this is set to zero, and I'm just gonna count off 18 turns. Um, I've got a I've got a whole number of turns to turn anyway, so there's no point putting a dividing plate on. Um, 90 tooth worm wheel in the in the centre of here, so if I want to divide that by five, which is what I think I want to do, um, I can also double check by, by um, making sure this lands on multiples of 72 degrees. There's no partial turns here, so you know that's really what the dividing plate excels at. So I'm gonna plunge in until we leave just a little bit of little bit of material um, between the shoulder and the cutter and uh, we'll go from there. I'm using um, soluble oil um, for the first for the first time or you know this is the first bottle I've made up of it I've, I've been using it for the last couple of jobs and I really like it. Anyway um, let's get going. Well, hopefully you can see the reflection in that. That's pretty, pretty well polished, not perfect. Uh, I've got the flutes in, I've got five. The way I work this out is I, I go from the um, circumference of the thing, um, circumference of the circle, I want about half the meat left. And so, so the gaps are about the same size as the, as the positives. And I think five is a nice number for these things because um, sort of I hold in a triple grip like that. Wherever I turn it, it sort of naturally falls like that. Um, so five is a really good number for that. And I think on a, after a bit of practice that something less than half a circle is good. Um, yeah. When I, when I did these little baby ones. Um, on the indicator holder, I I, um, I did full half circles, and I'm not so keen on that. I'd rather have fewer scallops of a bigger diameter that are not quite as deep as half a circle. Same on here. 
and I quite like the heavy chamfer as well. Um, that's come out really well. Let's go and try it on the mill. That's the play I'm talking about. No play. That shiny knob kind of looks a bit silly on an old um, old mill with uh, desperate need of a clean up and a repaint and all the rest, but it might inspire me to do some more to the rest. Oh yeah, one of the things I forgot to mention was that um, Gary Cude sent me a um, letter and some of his um, stickers for my sticker board. Now I still need to make a second sticker board. That hasn't happened yet, so these will be stored until I get that second board set up. But thank you, Gary. Um, much appreciated. And you'll see him on the channel in future. Okay, thanks everybody. See you next time.